Welcome guys and girls to this lecture. In this lecture, we are going to learn about EKS forget. So we are going to start with basic question. Why do we need it and what is it? Then we are going to go over differences between EKS forget and regular EKS worker nodes. All right, let's get started. So let's take a look at a regular Kubernetes cluster. Super basic level. So in Kubernetes cluster, you have your master as control plan and then bunch of nodes running as worker plan. Let's say this Kubernetes is running on EKS. Uh, so your master is managed by AWS and abstracted from you. You don't need to do anything with the master. However, each node is basically Amazon EC2. So at the end of the day, whenever you have EC2, you still have some overhead, uh, such as you have to do AMI rehydration, you have to do patching, scaling, you have to secure them, and you have to focus on cost optimization. Stressing a little bit on the cost optimization, uh, if you guys and girls uh, work on the enterprise, you know uh, EC2s most of the times are underutilized, doesn't matter if the CPU and memory of the EC2 is like 20% like utilized, uh, for certain times you still pay the full price, right? So this brings us to uh, Fargate. Uh, so Fargate was first announced with ECS uh, and now it is supported on EKS as well. So what is it? So with Fargate, uh, you still have a EKS cluster, you have a master, right? And the master is managed by AWS, but there are no nodes. Instead, you just deploy the pods. So what are some key points? So no worker nodes to manage, right? Even though it still has control plan, but that part is managed by AWS, but you don't have the overhead of managing EC2s. You just define and deploy your pods on Fargate. Still possible to mix Fargate and regular EC2 based EKS cluster. A horizontal pod autoscaler is possible. And for the cost, uh, this is a main saving point for enterprises. Since AWS is managing the control plane, you still pay the control plane, which is a fixed amount. For the pods, you pay per pod based on vCPU, memory, and the time the pod is running. So if you just deploy your pod and then terminate it once you are done using it, that's it. You're not gonna pay for any idle cost like you do for EC2. But before we go any further, I just wanted to show you guys and girls Fargate in action. Okay, so I spell up a Fargate cluster, EKSCTL create cluster name, and then uh, I just gave dash dash Fargate and that makes it a Fargate cluster. And then the cluster came up so if I go to the console, so this is the cluster. Uh, and then if I go to my EC2 screen, see there are no EC2s uh, that's running. It's only one EC2 and that's also stopped. This is my cloud nine. Uh, so the EKS cluster is still running. There is still a control plane, but there are no worker nodes. So if I click compute, uh, you can see the profile name is FP that's default and the namespaces are default and cube system. Uh, so what this means is uh, any pod that is deployed in namespace default and cube system, it is gonna run as Fargate pods. It is not gonna be using any nodes. Uh, so touching upon how you can mix Fargate and regular EC2 worker nodes, uh, so you can have a regular EKS cluster and then you can control based on these namespaces uh, which pod will go wh where. If the namespace falls under Fargate profile, then the pod is not gonna go on your worker nodes. It's just gonna be run as Fargate pod. But if the namespace does not fall under Fargate profile, then they're gonna run on EC2 as regular EC2 worker nodes. So now let's go back to the terminal. So this is the part I wanted to uh, show you guys and girls. So let's say I have this pod spec file. Uh, pretty straightforward, uh, really basic Nginx uh, image, uh, three replicas. So I am going to uh, deploy this, right? So kubectl apply dash f nginx deployment.yml. Okay, let's run this. Okay, the deployment apps test created. 
And since I did not specify any namespace, it's gonna go in the default namespace. So I'm going to run kubectl get all. Okay, these are pending. So I'm gonna wait a few seconds. Okay, a few seconds have passed. Uh, let's run kubectl get all again. Okay, so you can see three pods are running because we have three replicas and we have a deployment running named test and then we have a replica set uh, running as well. So see, the pods are running, but if I go back to my console and go back to EC2, there is still no node, right? So EKS is just managing the pods and that's what is meant by Fargate pods. And you guys and girls are probably thinking, Raj, this is very similar to Lambda in the serverless ecosystem. It is, uh, Fargate is also part of serverless ecosystem. Uh, so this is a part container, <laughs> part serverless. All right, now let's take a look at a good old comparison chart between regular EKS cluster running EKS nodes uh, as EKS worker versus EKS cluster with EKS Fargate and no worker nodes. Uh, one thing to note, Please, super important. Uh, this uh, lecture is recorded in May of 2020. Uh, so there's a lot of uh, changes and developments happening on EKS Fargate. So a lot of the differences uh, that I point out here might go away down the line. With that being said, let's get started. So for regular EKS cluster with EKS worker as EKS nodes, control plane runs on EKS. And even for EKS Fargate, control plane runs on EKS. Even though I said differences, I just wanted to make sure you guys and girls have this idea clear. Uh, there is no Fargate in vacuum. Uh, to run a EKS Fargate, you still need a EKS cluster, but there are no worker nodes, there is just the control plane. Uh, for EKS worker, worker nodes run on EC2, user need to manage nodes. For EKS Fargate, no worker nodes required, much less management overhead. Uh, for regular EKS worker, uh, pods can be exposed using services uh, such as load balancer and node port and ingress. For EKS Fargate, uh, classic and network load balancers are not supported. So you cannot expose a Fargate pod to internet uh, using services. Uh, pods can only be exposed using uh, ingress. Okay, so for the regular EKS worker, uh, daemon sets are used, uh, supported and used heavily. Uh, so daemon set as in one more pod in your node, uh, working, working for that uh, separate process, that is not supported. So daemon sets are not supported in Fargate. Uh, so this is a major difference. Uh, if you need to run a process, you need to run as a sidecar. Uh, so just to refresh, uh, what is a sidecar? Uh, so sidecar is basically uh, in the same pod, you run another container along with your application container. So which is not uh, ideal for logging and everything because then for every pod, you need to define another container in your pod spec. Okay, so this, like I said, this is a major difference how things work. So in case you are thinking, hey, I'm just gonna uh, move my application as is and my logging, monitoring that are using demo sets will work as is. You cannot do that. You have to do some work to change it to sidecar. Uh, for regular case worker, you are able to run stateful apps using EFS. Uh, stateful apps are not recommended at this point for EKS Fargate. It doesn't support uh, EFS natively. Uh, so the next point uh, for regular case worker, since you are choosing your EC2, uh, you can choose different EC2s depending on different workloads. For example, maybe you have a graphics intensive workload, uh, so you can choose GPU as your worker node EC2. Uh, for Fargate, you cannot select workload specific underlying hardware, uh, no GPU is supported. And then for each pod, you have to specify the amount of CPU and memory. Uh, so the maximum pod size is uh, four vCPU and 30 gigabyte of memory per pod. Regular uh, EKS worker, uh, they can work in public and private subnet. Uh, currently EKS Fargate only works in private subnet. So in this page, uh, the first two points are a little bit advanced. I'm not gonna go deep onto it, uh, but just keep in mind for interview purposes. Uh, for EKS worker, 
host port or host network supported for pods uh, and also for eks work a cni custom networking is possible uh, but for eks forget uh, neither host port host network or uh, nor cni custom networking is supported so which brings us to a important aspect uh, which is cost right uh, so for regular eks cluster cost is pretty straightforward uh, the cost will be cost of the control plane plus the cost of worker EC2s. Uh, it is possible to have more idle cost uh, in case you are running things on EC2. Uh, there is a chance that EC2 will not have like 90%, 100% utilization all the time. And even when it is like 20%, 30% utilized, you still have to pay the full price. Uh, for the EKS forget, you still need to pay for the control plane. That's the fixed cost. Plus, you need to pay the cost to run pods. Uh, so I'm going to go in deep for this one. So let's take a look at a, a cost uh, for a regular EKS cluster. Let's say EKS cluster is running with two M5 large EC2. And again, I'm not putting spot, reserved instance into here. This is just regular on-demand cost. Uh, okay, so EKS cluster with two M5 large EC2s. Cost is control plan cost plus worker nodes cost. Control plan cost is 10 cents per hour, so basically 24 hours a day and 30 days. Uh, so it's gonna be $72 per month. Uh, work and note cost, M5 large cost uh, 0 0.096 uh, per hour, then 24 hours, 30 days. And then since we have two uh, nodes, so that's why multiplied by two. So it comes around 138 bucks per month. So the total cost of the EKS cluster is $210 per month uh, for this configuration. For Fargate, we have to dive a little deeper. It's not as straightforward. Uh, so let's do that. Let's take a look at the EKS Fargate uh, podcast. Uh, so podcast is divided into two separate costs. One is podcast per vCPU per hour is this much. And then podcast per gigabyte memory per hour is this much. And then uh, there is a chart uh, for vCPU and memory. Like for example, um, if you are using one vCPU for the pod, the minimum memory you can allocate is two gigabyte, max is eight gigabyte in one gigabyte increments. You cannot have one vCPU and one gigabyte uh, memory, right? And then the pricing is per second with one minute uh, minimum. And another thing to keep in mind is for EKS Fargate, uh, it doesn't matter whether your pod is uh, getting called or not, right? Uh, maybe you, you deployed your application in a Fargate pod, but your application is not getting called or not getting executed. It doesn't matter if your pod is running, then you have to pay for it. Um, so if you don't want to pay for it, you have to terminate your pod. Uh, so with this in mind, uh, let's take a example one. So don't get scared by all this <laughs> uh, math and whatnot. So I'm going to go through it so that it becomes easier. Uh, so let's say you have 20 pods running and each pod is using uh, one vCPU and two gigabyte of uh, memory. And each pod is running for 10 minutes and it's happening every day of month. So you want to calculate the monthly cost. Uh, so right off the bat, we know the cost of Fargate is the control plane cost plus Fargate pods cost. First, the easy part, control plane cost is fixed, uh, whether it's a regular EKS cluster or Fargate EKS. It's basically 10 cents an hour, and so basically it comes down to $72 per month. Now, the Fargate pod vCPU cost, uh, we calculate by number of pods, multiplied by number of vCPUs, multiplied by price per vCPU second, multiplied by CPU duration per day in seconds, multiplied by number of days. So this is the monthly cost and why am I converting everything in seconds? Because pricing is per second, right? For a vCPU or memory. Uh, so it boils down to 20 pods, multiplied by uh, one vCPU, uh, multiplied by price per CPU second. So basically 0 0.04048 is the price per hour, right? So I'm dividing it by 60 minutes multiplied uh, by 60 seconds to get the price per second. 
and each pod is running for 10 minutes every day. So basically 10 minutes is 600 seconds multiplied by 30 days. So it comes to around $4 per month. Uh, similarly, Fargate pod memory cost is number of pods multiplied by number of uh, memory in gigabyte and then price per uh, GB second uh, and then memory duration per day in seconds uh, multiplied by number of days. So basically 20 pods, two gigabyte of memory multiplied by um, per GB memory per hour is 0.004445 as you can see on the left. And then this is for an hour. So I'm dividing it by 16 to 60 to bring it to seconds uh, multiplied by 10 minutes, which is 600 seconds multiplied by 30 days, uh, which is comes down to 88 cents. So total cost per month is the control plane, $72 uh, plus 4.04 uh, vCPU cost plus 88 cents memory cost. So basically it comes down to like $77 per month. So this is way cheaper than the regular EKS cluster cost, right? Regular EKS cluster cost for two M5 large is $210 per month. Uh, so is Fargate always cheaper? No, so it depends on your use case. Uh, so let's take a look at another pricing case. Uh, so in this case, everything else is same. 20 pods using one vCPU, two gigabyte of memory for each. But this time pods are running for uh, 12 hours. So what will be the cost? So again, uh, cost is control plane cost plus Fargate. Control plane cost is constant, so $72. So pod vCPU cost, everything else is same, except instead of 600 seconds, we have 43,200 seconds. Uh, so the Fargate pod vCPU cost is $291 per month. And the memory cost, again, everything is, is same as the previous case, except the duration is 43,200. So it comes down to $64. So the total cost come down to $427 per month which is more expensive than your regular EKS cluster with two M5 large worker nodes. So it all comes down to your use case. You cannot just blindly say, oh, I'm gonna use Fargate because Fargate will be cheaper. It depends on how much vCPU, how much memory, and how much time your pod will be uh, running. So I'm going to end this lecture with a favorite quote of mine, uh, which is, we don't believe in one tool to rule the world, we want you to use the right tool for the right job, uh, says our fearless leader, Andy Jesse, CEO of AWS. All right, guys and girls, that is the video. If you like the video, click the like button, smash it if you're into that kind of stuff, and subscribe. I have a bunch of other helpful videos on AWS and how to switch your career. Uh, check them out. Uh, all right, I'll see you guys and girls in the next video. Bye.